What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, we're on a great day. Right now, we are exactly where we have to be with a car like this. We are climbing a mountain right now. To my left, you will see an entire lake. Behind us, we have tons of cars, Mustangs, Challengers, you name it. And we all met up at CarMax to do this drive together because these roads around us right now are so much fun, especially with a ton of cars together. As you'd expect, right now we're in track mode with the exhaust setting. We're back in manual mode with the paddle shifters, right? That definitely wakes you up. It's like an absolute roller coaster. Behind me, I have a Mustang GT California Special and a Shelby GT500. They're so vastly different, but what I love about it is that this car, when you get inside this and drive it, the experience is nothing really like a GT350. The 350, it's like, screaming loud with 8,000 RPMs and going to 8,000 RPMs with a V8 is just absurd, honestly. It feels as planted, but the experience itself is totally different. Exactly like getting inside a Mustang GT California Special versus a normal Mustang V6. So it seems like every single Mustang is so widely different than each other. And that's what makes it fun, I think. In front of us right now, though, we have a motorcycle, another motorcycle, and another motorcycle. The one in front of me has a passenger in the back, so I'm not gonna really tailgate or try to, you know, put any pressure on them at all. This, this is the kind of road that even when you're not driving fast, you're still having a nice time. When I drive this car, I realize there's so much more to it than being fast in a straight line. It feels like the brakes are amazing. It feels like it can stop on a dime. It feels like it can turn hard, corner fast. That's why I like it. I've seen a lot of people out there who buy this car and don't even really experience what it's like to drive stock and they go right out to tuning it and making it faster in the straight line. That kind of goes against what buying this car is all about. This is a Shelby GT500. It's already been modded from a Mustang GT. I missed it, didn't film it, dang it. A Porsche GT3 RS was chasing a Z06 back there and they were going fast and the Porsche was riding an inch behind that car. And they're calling me right now because they saw it too. Look at these cars. Okay, so I think we've almost made it. I think that's a new Porsche Speedster, actually. Here we are. Hopefully we find some spots. There's so many people out here today. So many. Okay. one of the first ones actually Hey, are there spots down that way more that way? I don't know if there, there is parking, but I don't know if there is any. Okay. I could park next to the ZL1. How you doing, man? You know what? Should I park next to the ZL1? Hell yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> ZL1 right next to us. That's funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, that was no, fun. I, I, no, no. I appreciate it. What's your name? Uh, Ramon there. Nice, my name's Austin. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too there, Austin. I finally got it clean. It was pretty dirty for a long time, but man, you're right. It looks pretty good next to the other one. <laughs> this is a nice turnout here today. Got Hellcats over there. Hopefully we find some red eyes. And look at that. We do have a second 2020 GT500 out here. This one finished in race red. I haven't seen any race red GT500s with stripes on them, especially the size stripes as of yet. But I'm really happy to see this thing out here because the GT500 has been such a long wait for these things to finally come out. And good news is we're starting to see them at Cars and Coffee. Now that's a pretty good sight. ZR1 right next to the GT500. And this one, as you can tell, it does not have the Recaro seats. You have two choices. And I believe the Recaro seats are an extra $1,700 versus these seats. Now these ones are heated and cooled in comparison. So if you were going to daily drive this on the road, um, probably those seats would be better. But in my opinion, I think the, the Recaro seats feel really comfortable and look mean to the car. But in my opinion though, you gotta get the Recaro seats. And down below is for the front splinter wickers plus the gurney flap in the rear, so this car does have the handling package. Nonetheless, so awesome build. You've got the Porsches over here, GT3 RS, and then another GT3 right there, and then down there you have a 720S and a ton of exotics. Did not see that one coming. 
Here's a McLaren Senna. One million dollars right here. This car is insane. It's got blue finished carbon fiber on it. And then here to the right, we have all the Ford GTs. I found more carbon fiber wheels right here. New 2019, probably Ford GT with the carbon series on it. And same kind of gloss carbon fiber wheels that are gonna be on my track pack GT500. It's crazy to think about it. I got denied for this car by Ford, but rest assured, Ford denied me for their mid-engine. I'm buying Chevy's mid-engine instead. The car looks great though. We've got Don's car right there, Shelby GT350. He changed the back taillights actually. Then we have another matching color combo, S197 Shelby GT500. You've got the last manual GT500, you know that? This is the last of a dying breed. Dying, man. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the ZL1. These cars are incredibly fast. And yes, the GT500 has over 100 more horsepower. It seemed like in a recent review test comparison online, the ZL1 beat the GT500. But what was interesting about it was that in the test, they used worn tires. And also, they didn't have the front splitter wickers installed. So the front downforce would not at its peak. Plus, the GT4 style track wing on the carbon track pack GT500 was set in the street setting. And I'm not sure if the car had the camera plates that come with it. So it was interesting seeing that comparison with the ZL1 1LE versus the GT500 online. But I think there are so many different factors that play into it that you really can't determine which one is faster through that test. Um, hopefully a new test comes out with both cars actually prepped for the track. Plus what's weird is that during that Willow Springs lap, this car got basically the same time as the GT350R. There's no way that that can happen. Hopefully, I'm guessing this car, the 500, will run at least three seconds faster than the GT350R. Okay guys, so here we are leaving Cars and Coffee. We've got David with us and we're gonna show him what the 2020 GT500 is gonna be all about, man. So now you're with your buddy in the GTCS. Yeah. So big difference, right? S197 oh, versus yeah. S550. You, you can pull both paddle shifters and, and rev like that. Yeah, uh -huh. when, uh, when Noah told me that all the new 2020s are, are uh, like automatic with the, with the paddles, I was like, dang, that, that sucks, but honestly, it's kind of it's nice. You heard that pop just yeah. now? You got those Teslas everywhere out here, it's don't you? Here. Are you a fan of Teslas? I mean, my brother had one, and it was it was nice just being able to, you know, have those features on it, like the self-driving and all that, but uh, I need to I need to use that. Another, see, Tesla, the, the body style of the Teslas oh, just looks so weird, weird to me. Yeah. Have you seen the new uh, Cybertruck? Oh, dude, that thing is so <laughs> weird. It looks like it's straight from Halo. Uh, Halo or um, Blade Runner. Um. <laughs> exactly. Elon, look, you're, you're doing great with everything. No, no, he said throw the rock at the window. <laughs> oh, that was a nice pop. Whenever I'm in this car, I just kind of like oh, yeah, wait for the pops. To, uh... that's, that's all. Uh, if you click and hold the left paddle shifter, it'll downshift you to the lowest possible gear available. Um, so we'll do that right now. So click and hold. So second gear it is. And then... <laughs> Pretty good? <laughs> what? Yes. Imagine that, like, exiting a corner, though, because... Oh, man. It, it makes the entire experience so fun. I bet. That, that'd be insane. That's full throttle. That is awesome. Oh man, it makes me. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and it doesn't spin, does it? No, no, man, that's it, just traction. You, you notice the front end how it just goes up, yeah. and then you, like you were saying earlier, these seats hug you just hug, like yeah. that. And like you notice here with the DCT, the shifts are so quick with it that you don't do much, do you? You just foot to the floor with the gas. And then, I don't know, what do you think? Would you rather have a manual? I mean, Personally, like with the new, with the new, uh, like automatic 
paddle shifters, it's it's so much faster than what a manual yeah, or like yeah. a regular manual can do. But it depends what you want to do with it, right? Exactly. So if you want to, exactly. if you're really into the speed, like, like being like insanely quick with your yeah. shifts and stuff, I guess DCT is the way to go. Or if you go to the drag strip of the racetrack, mm -hmm. probably DCT. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you yeah. hopping in the car with me, man. And if you want, we can do some more down there on the corners later on. Yeah. But I think, uh, I think I'm looking forward to finally getting food, dude, all day. Oh, yeah. God, that's a V8 right there. But it's weird, huh? This this thing, what a rotary dial. Oh, yeah. You want the I manual? I wasn't expecting seeing it when I looked into it. I was like, Dad, you get used to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But then, like going in manual, it says, you know, like like that's it. And it's like that. Yeah. That's the cool stuff. Where's my gear shift knob? Yeah, guys. So, do not embarrass yourself with the new GT500. Just keep one of these around. Actually, says. Shelby GT500 on it, it's all blacked out, and lay it right here in the middle and no one should tell the difference. Okay guys, we just finished eating at In-N-Out. We've got Don inside his GT350. You guys may recognize him from the PP2 versus GT350 video. Hey, How you doing, yeah. man? How's it going? And this is Mason. It's Mason over there. It's perfectly in the car, dude. And then we have Joe over here. He still has the GT350, but he bought an AMG GTR. Next stop is going to be back onto the Canyon Road. We're going to give Don a ride. He owns a GT350, get his reactions, his impressions of this car. And then after that, we're going to check out Joe's new car. He got that car because initially he wanted the GT500, but I don't think he, he found one. And also they want so much money for the new 500, you could buy a AMG GTR because there's some really good deals out right now for those cars. So a track pack would be probably, if you got a maxed out track pack, it'll be maybe 10, 20, 30 grand cheaper than the GTR. So if, you, if you're spending that much money, you could dip into the exotic scene, the, the supercar scene, right? Because this is still a pony car, right? A Mustang. But it's cool because he still has his GT350 and now he has that. So he has two completely different cars. Hey, check that out. So first time this happened to me, but the GT500 won't change exhaust settings. So I'm hitting OK as you can see, and it's staying in normal mode, even in sport mode. When I use the dial down there, I'll, I'll hit it right now so you guys can see. But when I hit this button down here, it says exhaust mode selection not available. I can't figure out what's going on. I can't, I've turned off the car multiple times. I'll do it again. He's flying, a lot of cars flying, but turning it on again, Putting in the drive, um, exhaust mode, selection. The car won't change exhaust mode. Even if I put in track mode, the exhaust mode stays the same. So I don't know what's going on. What's also unfortunate is that it seems like somebody crashed. Now looking ahead of us, you'll notice that the entire road is dead stop. I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards it being a motorcycle crash. Everyone is being told to turn around. What are the odds this happening today? Gosh dang it, I wanted to show Don what this car is all about. Well, here we are, we made it to the ocean. Man, Joe, seeing this thing driving right next to me, unbelievable, you know that? The way this thing looks, I, I am just in shock with it. Plus, you have all the carbon fiber pieces on it as well. Is this an option to get this in carbon fiber? Correct. So down here, the side splitter, side option. skirts. 5300 option. Wow, man, well, it's funny thinking about that because with the, uh, the GT500, the carbon fiber package itself is well, like 19 grand, but you're getting carbon wheels on it. And is that a carbon wing as well, or what? The wing is uh, actually not carbon, but everything else it is. Man, this is nice. I thought you were telling me that you were in the market for a new GT500 not too long ago. Correct. But the difference in price between the GTR and the GT500 was not really much of a difference for me to drive a Ford and pay 135 to 140 grand versus driving an AMG GTR and paying 149000 In SoCal, guys, if you haven't seen it, the prices are insane out here for cars. Now, if you want a GT500, 
Every single dealership that I know of here in SoCal is charging at a minimum 30K over, maybe 25 to 30K over sticker. And if you want the track pack like, like he did, that's 40k over sticker. So yeah, 100. If you get get a maxed out base or well, track back with the stripes, that's 145 grand with the markup on. That's not even including right. taxes on it too. And right. like you're saying, you're getting that car is hand built, right? Correct. Completely. And then this, a to Z. so it's it's a big difference. I understand why, why you did it, and it kind of it kind of shows you guys that there are more choices out there because getting this car, it is really tough. I will admit that I, I bought it across the country. And I really do recommend you guys, if you want to buy a GT500, to search out of state. But for most people, getting this car, there's a huge markup involved. And like he did, you can always cross shop and look around, like the CA Corvette, for example. That car, the performance-wise, is pretty similar to the GT500. But again, it's another option and choice out there. How do you like it? Because you own a GT350. So correct. getting that and then the getting Shelby GT350 a, a super 2018, car, correct. how does it compare? Don't get me wrong, I love the, the, the GT350 Shelby. It's a, it's a beautiful, it's a stick shape. It makes you feel like you're, you know, muscle and everything. But this is a different breed right there. <laughs> this is a totally different breed. This is a, a technology that no matter how fast you drive into the turn, no matter what you do, the car will hug the road like it's a magnet. This is lower than the GT500, right? Like stance-wise? It's parked in my garage right next to the GT350 you know, it's a big 2018. Difference? And it seems like it's a lower car. Yeah? Yes. And plus you're sitting lower too, right? Correct. It's like a cockpit. It's like an airplane, dude. This looks... Yeah, the, the quality... This is nice. I, I, I definitely... I see why you got this. And that's what Mustang down. The Mustang, it's a great car. 10, 6 and a quarter mile and the track pack is as fast as the GT3 RS. That's incredible. But you're right, it's a different um, style of vehicle. This is more like an exotic supercar. Correct. That's more the pony car. It's really, if you are a Mustang person, Correct. and you're just a fan of rear wheel drive, front engine, and this classic American look, by all means, get the GT500 or the carbon track pack. It's all up to you. Also, I like to mention that how frustrated I was trying to go and get a GT500 and every dealer that you spoke to um, can promise you when the car is going to come number one jack up the price 30 to 40 thousand dollar mob which I don't see any reason why some dealerships can't tell you whether they have the golden ticket allocation or not some say they do and then I, I yeah there's some issues with that too Correct. How much horsepower do you have on this actually? 577. 577 horsepower. versus 760. So I heard technically this is a mid-engine vehicle, well front mid-engine because the engine is placed behind the front wheels, right? That's correct. So with that, the engine is further forward. Yep, just push that one down and it should unclick. The entire center of the engine is much higher up in this than the Mercedes. Like like it's way, if you look this Everything way. This, much lower, correct. Yeah, that, that's much lower. So different center of gravity for sure. Here we go, hopping inside this car. And man, shoot, we're sitting way lower than the uh, yep. the Shelby, it seems like. We're like an inch off the ground. Advanced performance. Sitting in here definitely does hug you in. You feel like you're part of the car, right? You're That's not like right. sitting on top of it. You're sitting down low. And it kind of feels like full on like, like, like airplane almost sitting in here whole cockpit in your side so when you decided you're not getting any gt500 what kind of cars did you cross shop with at the same time well i also was interested in a c8 corvette oh a c8 correct <laughs> yes and um i did kind of engage with dealers that uh one of them in temecula paradise chevy they wanted five thousand overpriced and twenty five hundred dollar down and uh, god knows where you get your car they don't they have no idea <laughs> And it's like you're gonna go and park money, you know, in uh, in a dealer, and hope that maybe in a year you get your car. They can't even tell you because Chevy was on strike. Sitting in here, I feel like the ride it's it's pretty similar to the Mustang. Um, I think it's kind of dead on, 
with how, how soft it is and firm at the same time. I think this is a bit firmer than the Mustang, but that's the base model GT500, and this is the GTR, right? So this is All the right. track focus car. But it definitely it feels like it's made out, it, it feels quality to me, and I can't imagine how insane this thing is on the racetrack. I think acceleration times and track times, it's going to probably be right there next to the track pack. We got Willow Springs Raceway, probably, or Auto Club Speedway, and see what kind of lap times these cars put down. First impressions, major fan of this. This is cool. I like experiencing all the cars out there and AMG GTR. I know we didn't go fast. We literally went like 15 miles an hour this entire time. So he's gonna wait until he hits 1,000 miles on it and then it's been completely broken in. I also think the comparison will be pretty cool because these are unorthodox competitors, right? You'd usually think ZL1 or maybe Lamborghini Huracan, but AMG GTR. Who knows, this thing is incredibly fast on the road course. And if the 500 could get lap times close to this or faster, that'd be amazing. Being in it initially and just looking at it, I think you're getting your money's worth. And we're back in the 2020 GT500. I really do think this goes to show you that these markups, these four dealerships are really turning off a lot of buyers that are Ford enthusiasts because he owns a GT350 and he legitimately wanted a new GT500 and he was asking me for help as well and I did, I did what I can but just it turned out that every single dealer that, the dealer that he would call would have a markup and imagine paying a dealership let's say 10 grand over sticker you're really handing them 10 grand and you're not paying for any performance out of it you're just really giving it to them and let's say there's some fair deals out there yes in california for for like a main example 30k over sticker for a mustang and i don't want to sound negative about it and like oh it's just a mustang which because I, I love this car this is way more than, than a mustang to me but paying that much money over sticker don't do it. It's not worth it. It's been like this for years now with the GT350s. It was like this with the S197 GT500s early on. It was like this. And it's for these Ford dealerships to charge 20, 30K over, it's nothing to them. They'll do it all day long. If you're going to spend 30K over a sticker, 20K over a sticker for a track pack, why not consider what else is out there? Like a used uh, McLaren 570S. The point is, as you saw with him, markups, they're frustrating a lot of people working with the Ford dealerships. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out and subscribe for much more great Shelby videos coming your way. And also CA Corvette videos pretty soon. I can't wait for that. This car and the CA are going to be so different than each other. And also, I want to give all of you a huge shout out, a huge thank you for meeting up with us at CarMax today and driving out all the way to OC Cars and Coffee. It was so much fun. And plus, it was so much fun meeting all of you who were there because, man, the turnout was so good today. Thanks again. I'll see all of you in the next episode.